Hey, I thank you guys for uh, being here with me today just to talk a little bit about what we're talking about right now in church. Um, kind of the anchor scripture that we've been talking about today is uh, Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Just how the, the word tells us, God said, look, honor me from your wealth, from the first of all your produce, and I'll make sure that your barns are filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So I just thought rather than hearing from me, I just thought it'd be great to have um, you guys who are part of our church family. Uh, you go to various campuses, different stages of life, just to give your take um, and your experience on, on God's economic plan. Chip, I, I go back to my college days at Southern in 1968. And on Sunday evening service, uh, there was an emphasis on a mission trip. And it was just as if God was sitting right next to me. And he said, do you trust me? I want you to give half of everything in your pocket to this mission trip. And I said, what? And he said, I want you to trust me. I want you to give. I want you to listen to me. And I did. And it was not a great sum of money, but it was the obedience part. Mr. Jerry is saying, hey, I learned it in college. Mac, you are a college student, but you must have learned it at some point. Tell me, tell me what, it, what that was like for you to learn how to tithe or to honor God yeah. with your, your money. I, I grew up in a family that we went to church every Sunday. Um, and so, like, I always noticed my dad, he would write a check every Sunday, every week. As I got older, I just realized, you know, what tithing really meant. And I, I kind of, like, really grasped it when I did become a college student. I look back over the years of thinking all the times that I went on mission trips and people who were faithful to, to tithing enabled me to go on those mission trips. A lot of the high school students go to camps every summer. And so, like, I can be a part of helping kids go to, to camp at summer because that's where my life change happened was that student life in Birmingham. I want life change to happen for for other high school students and that can, they can understand what it means to give. And this is what it's about. It's about giving back so that we can in, like further the gospel and, and just grow the church. Lacey, what about as a, as a single mom, uh, the idea of tithing? It, t tell me about your experience and kind of where you learned uh, about tithing or, or where'd you pick that up? Sure, I would say growing up, I understood um, the biblical principle of tithing. Um, at the time, though, when I first had my daughter and she was a baby, I will say that that's when it was um, probably the most challenging for me. I wasn't as um, consistent. There was just fear there and um, a lot of financial responsibility and um, wasn't making a lot at the time. And but I quickly saw that, um, you know, 90% of my income blessed by God was far greater and um better than 100% keeping for myself. But I will say um, this past year though, um, I did go through a really hard time um, financially and I didn't waver in um, my giving, but it was really neat for me um, to be able to, I guess, more personally see God as my provider. So I'm, I'm really grateful and he really showed himself faithful during that time. Outlive was an initiative we did, I guess, uh, about six years ago, five or six years ago. Um, where a, a lot of what's going on today at Pine Lake is a result of that. A lot of children were adopted and stuff. And so it was an initiative like Making Room. And Jonathan, you guys were, you, you felt led to give Ashley's uh, income during that time. How did y'all arrive at that? I mean, what in the world made you think, hey, why don't we give that, that kind of sacrifice? What is that? Because that's not tithing. This is over and above that. We're talking about your offering. How did you get there? I mean, I think there, it was a lot of prayer. In this instance, it felt really clear. And I remember... Uh, being at, at the house and talking to her about it and just saying, I think, I think, even though I knew it was clear, I think this is kind of what the Lord's leading. And I don't know, we both just kind of came back together and felt like this is, this is what the Lord is leading our family to do. It was a difficult time because the budget just didn't match up. It didn't make sense. But um, at the end of each, I don't know if you want to call it budget cycle or just any time we kind of reflected on it, it was the Lord providing through that time. And we saw kind of the bigger blessing through all of that. Coming out of Outlive, our third daughter had open heart surgery. And so coming out of him being <clears throat> faithful during that, I mean, it was a hard time and would never want to go through that again. But it just carried us into, we just knew he was going to take care of her and us. And it was a level of trust in the Lord that was built over During that. Outlive, yeah. Yeah. Anytime we needed a need, it was met. 
So, Jerry and Belinda, have y'all ever disagreed on an amount to give? And if so, you know, whether to the, to the church or to a cause, have you ever disagreed? And if so, what'd you do? I trusted Jerry's decision, you know, because he had a very early experience, you know, knowing that if God says that you do it, that's it. That's the end of it, you know? And I think probably one of the things that visually helped me so much, he looked at me one day and he said, Belinda, if you shut your hand, God can't do anything. If you open it up, he can do everything. And he taught me how to live with an open hand. And God blesses you when you live with an open hand. And we've never disagreed, but I followed Jerry. So what would you, what would you guys say to a person who's sitting here today in church and they say, you know what, I just can't afford to tithe? I think you have to start somewhere. Give a little bit of it, 5%, 2%, whatever it is, start there. And, and don't wait until you've paid all your bills. I believe firmly that the Lord will bless that. I would say I'm going to speak to college students because that's who I'm, I connect with. Um, I know a lot of my friends don't have jobs. Whatever money you do have, like, give. You know, no matter how impossible it seems, I really just think that the Lord will honor you in that. In John 16:33, Jesus spoke of peace. I, I give you peace. And if a person is struggling and does not have that peace, then he needs to reach out to Jesus and Jesus needs to tell him, like he said, you know, I've overcome the world. That's the world telling you that you can't afford not to. It's an honor to be able to give him our first fruits, the, the first. And then everything else has a way of working itself out. You know, it, we, we, our needs end up being met because God truly can do more than we ever even thought about asking him for. It's the most, and it's so much fun watching him be God, you know, and actually watch him do that is a, is a beautiful thing. When you look at your, your giving statement at the end of the year, or you're writing that check and you're thinking, oh man, <laughs> you know, it, it is. Let's just be honest. In our flesh, there are times, you know, when you give and it does seem unreasonable. I mean, what, what, you're, what you're being prompted to do seems unreasonable to our flesh. To the world, it doesn't make sense. How do you, how do you guys combat the fact that, you know what, I could do a lot of things? I do sometimes find myself looking at the tithe amount and think, oh my, I mean, and we even joke about it sometimes, like, man, like, like anything that we want, you could kind of put the tithe towards and it'd be, you could buy it or pay it off or whatever and you're like, but giving is also about the recipient of the, of the gift and somehow looking beyond yourself and your own needs and thinking about where your tithe and where your additional funds go towards. Truly putting yourself in the, like, what impact that has on the kingdom and maybe starting there and looking at, okay, this doesn't really make sense for me with my finances, but I do have certainty in knowing that the Lord is going to use that somewhere else. And I feel that that almost alone could be a blessing enough for people to just put it out there. It's like a way to be a part of something bigger than myself, which would be the kingdom. And I want to be a part of what God's doing. And don't ever let fear creep in mm. because it can. You know, all of a sudden you think, I need this money for something else. You know, and especially when you start having children and stuff like that, you think, you know, the money from the church, the church has got lots of money. You know, me, my wife and I need this money. Don't let fear creep in. Just do what the Bible tells us to do and give God your first fruits. It's real simple if we just follow God's words. It's amazing what He will do if we truly are obedient to Him.